taking on the seemingly impossible is not a new experience for Minda Dentler. Last year, she took beating the odds to a new level. That's when she became the first woman to complete the Ironman World Championships in her division in Kona, Hawaii. It's a feat for any athlete to complete this grueling course, let alone an athlete who's also a survivor of polio. One summer, I uh, watched the New York City Triathlon, and one of my friends, who's also a wheelchair athlete, uh, was competing in it. And I remember thinking, wow, that is so cool. I would like to do a triathlon. I was born in India, and I contracted polio probably around the age of six months. And uh, polio affected me by paralyzing me from the hips down. And so uh, my mom, who was unable to care for me, she left me at an orphanage. And luckily, three and a half years later, I was adopted by an American family, and I moved to Spokane, Washington, uh, where I was able to get the medic medical care necessary to enable me to walk with leg braces and crutches. I grew up in a very athletic family. My three siblings, uh, they played many sports. I often watched them um, from the sidelines. I, I would volunteer at local road races, and I often wondered how I could get involved or, or what I could do to play sports. But it wasn't until I was around age 28, after I had moved to New York City, uh, I found out about this organization called Achilles. Achilles introduces people with disabilities to athletics. I didn't make the connection that uh, I could be that person in that wheelchair in that race that I grew up watching until I was introduced to an organization that uh, allowed me to not only make that connection, but they also loaned me a, a hand cycle as my first sport to participate in races. I love living in New York City. It's a very diverse place with uh, a lot of different people doing many different things. You can be who you want to be here. New York is a very competitive place. If you spend very much time here, like I have, uh, you sort of uh, get that vibe of, of being competitive yourself. Hi there. Hey, what's up? How we doing? Good. You ready to ride? Yes. All right, let's go. What are we doing? Kona course today. Okay. Why not a little return? Let's do it. Return to Kona. In all honesty, the biggest challenges uh, for doing my first triathlon was actually to learn the disciplines because um, I had only known how to ride a hand cycle. And so I had to get swimming lessons to learn how to swim. All right, Minda, here we go. Ready? OK. Oh my god, that's so crazy. There we go. Just like able-bodied athletes, uh, wheelchair athletes have to qualify for the Ironman World Championship. But it's smaller, trying to be easier. Yes. Ironman, they have either half Ironman or Ironman races that you can qualify at uh, all over the world. And so I went to a qualifying race in Europe, and I won my division, and that gave me a slot to the Ironman World Championships in Kona, Hawaii. I think what makes the Ironman special is the amount of training and preparation that it requires from each athlete. So it's not so much the difficulty on the day, but it's definitely what it takes to get there. It's the 10 months or the year that it takes to actually get to that start line before you even start the race that makes it really special. I know you're nervous the top, but just get in the water. In October 2012, I came to Kona. And I failed. I did not make the swim bike cutoff time of 10 and a half hours. 
that failure really motivated me to try again the following year. Actually, no woman wheelchair athlete has completed the Kona course because it's so difficult to make those time cutoffs. You know, a big part of what Minda had to face was the clock. It's the reality that if you don't get to this point, you don't go on. And that's a whole new level of, of competition in this, in this type of sport. Everybody who showed up on that island, able-bodied, knows they can finish. So that's a factor they don't even have to think about. I am most proud of my performance in Kona in 2013. By making history and becoming the first uh, female hand cyclist to ever complete the Kona course, uh, it just has a special place in my heart and, and it really motivates me to and shows me that anything is possible. When you talked to Minda about how she got involved, it was the idea of like, hey, that was something that looked cool, I want to try it. And, you know, able-bodied or not, like too many people don't just go out and try them. You know, she, she shows that you can do it, you can try it, sometimes you're going to love it, sometimes you won't, sometimes you just end up the world champion. I think uh, being a person uh, with polio, having this disability, by having the success that I've had so far, um, that I represent what is possible. I think with hard work and dedication and, and um, with a great team of people around me, I've been able to accomplish a lot of things and I want people to know that they could do the same and it doesn't matter what you look like or, or where you came from that you can achieve what you want to achieve um, by having that hard work and dedication and a great team around you. My goals for the near term uh, are to uh, actually go back to Kona. I, because I won my division in 2013, I am able to go back and compete once again. I really want to improve my time, and I think that experience is just, it's just amazing. In terms of longer term, my goals are to advance in my career and in the financial services industry as well as to have a family. I hope to raise my kids in a polio-free world one day. And Bill Gates has been quoted as saying that his proudest achievement in life is the work the Gates Foundation has done to eradicate polio in India. India just celebrated three years without a single case of wild polio.